This is Algebra 1B, Section 8.4, and factoring quadratics when the leading coefficient is not equal to 1. So we'll jump right into our first problem here. We have 2k squared, and there's nothing that goes into all three of those terms, which means we're going to use this method we call split middle term. 2 times 14 is 28. Then I'm looking to see what two numbers multiply to 28 and add up to this middle term of negative 11. So I can go by starting with 1, 1 and 28, it doesn't work. 2 and 14 add up to 16, not 11. 28 divided by 3 isn't a whole number. 28 divided by 4 is 7, so 4 times 7 is 28. And 4 plus 7 is 11, so I've got the winning pair. Notice that the middle term is a negative 11, so then if both of these signs are negative, they still multiply to positive 28, and now they add up to the negative 11 that we need. So splitting this middle term, we have 2k squared minus 4k minus 7k plus 14. So a quick check here. These two terms are equal to negative 11k, so I haven't changed it in any way other than to rewrite it, split up into those two middle terms. Now, group and group equals 0. The GCF for these first two terms is 2k. If we take that 2k out, we get oops, k minus 2. And GCF for these two terms, uh, remember we want this leading coefficient to become positive, so we're going to factor out a negative 7, which makes it become k minus 2 on the inside. Good news is that those are the same. So then in factored form, we have 2k minus 7 times k minus 2 equals 0. Set this part equal to 0. Add 7 to both sides, divide by 2, and k equals 7 halves. In other words, if we plug 7 halves into the original problem where these k's are at, or if we plug it into this green part right here, plug in 7 halves here, we get 0 times whatever this is is going to be 0. So our first answer is 7 halves. The second answer is that k minus 2 equal to 0. We get a solution of 2. So those are our two answers for this problem. Moving to the right, problem number 2. Once again, there is no GCF involved in this one. Nothing goes into all three of those terms. 3 times 6 is 18. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 18 and add up to negative 11. 1 and 18 doesn't work. 2 goes in 9 times. 2 plus 9 is 11. We want a negative 11, so then if these are both negative, they still multiply to positive 18. Now they add to negative 11, so we're going to use those two terms to split this middle term. 3r squared still leads off the way. This negative 11r is now negative 2r, negative 9r, and plus 6 equals 0. So all we did is we changed this term into those two. Group. Group. GCF here is r, 3r minus 2. For this one, it's going to be a 3, but remember we want that coefficient, leading coefficient, to be negative, so we're going to take out a negative 3 makes the inside become 3r minus 2. Good news is that those are in fact the same. So in factored form we have r minus 3. 3r minus 2 equals 0. r minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. r equals 3. Next one, 3r minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. Divide by 3 and we get r equals 2 over 3. Scroll down and do a few more. Problem number three. Five times six is equal to 30. What multiplies to 30 and adds to negative 13? So I could go through my entire list again. I know it's going to be three and 10. More specifically, a negative three and a negative 10 because that's a negative 13 right there. So five n squared minus three n minus 10 n plus six equals zero. Group everything, first two and the last two. n times 5n minus 3, that was with our GCF. And for the second part, once again, we have to have that leading term be positive. So we're going to factor out a negative, and then 2 goes into both of them. Gives us a 5n minus 3. Good news is those are the same. So we have 5n minus 3 times n minus 2 equals 0. And from here, that equals 0 and solve it, we get one answer of n equals 2. 
5 n minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. Divide by 5, and we get the other answer to be positive 3 fifths. Problem number 4. One thing I noticed at the beginning of this one is these are much bigger numbers. 15 times negative 27 is huge. I don't want to work with huge numbers if I have to. And in fact, we don't have to because all three of these terms for the first time have a GCF. 3 goes into all of them. So if we factor out that 3, it would become 5v squared plus 12v minus 9 equals 0. And these are single digit numbers, at least the out to, outside 2 are, compared to the triple digit numbers that we started with. Ignore this 3 for a little bit, and let's focus on the inside. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. What multiplies to negative 45 and adds to 12? Um, this is a harder one. 1 and 45 doesn't work. 2 doesn't work. 3 goes into it 15 times, and now I'm starting to see it. Because it's a negative 45, one of these terms is negative. Together, they have to add up to positive 12. So if I put the negative here, they would multiply to the negative 45 we need. If we add them, then it is a positive 12 that we need. So there's our winning combination. So let me write this one. 5v squared minus 3v plus 15v minus 9 equals 0. Split that 12 into those two terms. Group, group, group. First GCF is simply going to be V, 5V minus 3. The second one is going to be a 3. And we get 5V minus 3 on the inside. Those are the same. So we have 5V minus 3 times V plus 3. And I can't forget about this 3 that I factored out at the beginning. I drew my arrow down. I want to make sure I keep that involved. Now we have this is our completely factored form. The goal here, though, wasn't to factor. It was to solve for V. What v's make this equation work? Well, start at the back this time. 5v minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides, divide by 5. v is equal to 3 fifths. We just did that one over a second ago. For this one, v plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 from both sides, so we have v equals negative 3. So I've got those two answers so far. And here's the confusing one. We just took out a 3. If I set 3 equal to 0, I see that's not true. That never works. So this does not give us an answer. And in fact, instead of factoring the 3 out, we could have divided at the very beginning both sides, the three terms on the left and the one term on the right. We could have divided all that by 3, and we would have gotten down to this gray. But it's a good habit to keep factoring it out. Know that if you just factor out a constant with no variable, that doesn't give you another solution. So then these are the two only solutions. I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to this problem because as I see it, um, we have really big numbers. We have two triple digit numbers. 60 times 128 is huge. Good news here though is all three of these terms can be divided by the same thing. There is a GCF. I see that they're all even, so I can divide them by two, but then I still would have even numbers after that, which means I can divide everything by four. So put the four on the outside, which would make it become 15a squared, 176 divided by 4 is equal to 44. And then 128 divided by 4 is equal to 32. So these numbers aren't exactly small, but at least they're significantly smaller than our initial ones. And then we're going to go through our process. 15 times 32, expecting a pretty big number for that one, 480. Yikes. What multiplies to 480? and adds up to 44. I don't know, so I'm going to use the process we've done before. I'll start at 1 and 480, and clearly those add up to way more than 44, so that's not going to work. 2, 240, no. 4 and 120, getting a little bit closer, but still they add up to well over 100. And maybe I want to skip some numbers because I see I'm going nowhere, so maybe I'll go all the way up to 10. 10 and 48. That's, those multiply to 480 and add up to 58, so I'm getting closer. 480 divided by 11 didn't work. 480 divided by 12 is 40. These only add up to 52, so I know I'm getting closer. Let's try 480 divided by 13. It doesn't work. 480 divided by 14 doesn't work. 480 divided by 15 is 32. That adds up to 47. 
480 divided by 16. I'm just trial and error do, doing going through as many of these as I can. 480 divided by 16 is 30. Now I add up to 46, and that's getting very close. 480 divided by 17 didn't work. 480 divided by 18 didn't work. 480 divided by 19 didn't work. 480 divided by 20 is 24. Look at all these pairs I had to try. None of them work yet. But all of a sudden, I found this winning combination that multiplied to 480, and they do add up to that 44. Sometimes we have to try a lot of them. So in factored form, it's going to be, tear this down, 15a squared plus 20a plus 24a plus 32 equals 0. So we've split into those two different terms. Group, 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 group. First GCF is 5a. 3a plus 4. Second GCF is big. I believe it's an 8. That would give us 3a plus 4 again. Now looking at this one, that's looking nice. 5a plus 8. 3a plus 4 equals 0 with this GCF of 4 on the outside. Now as we saw last time, if we try to solve for this one, 4 equals 0 never works. That's a dead end. 5a plus 8 equals 0. Set this factored part equal to 0. Subtract 8, and we get a equals negative 8 fifths. So there's one answer. And then 3a plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4, divide by 3, and we get another answer of negative 4 thirds. So I hope that helps you get a head start on working on these problems of factoring quadratics when the leading coefficient is not equal to 1.